Hey guys, this is Craig Migliaccio with AC Service Tech, and today what we're going over are the top five problems with the HVAC contactor. Before we get started, I just want to show how the contactor works and explain the differences. So in this case, we have a two-pole contactor, so it has two sets of normally open contacts that will close when you apply power onto the coil. So here you can see an exposed coil on the side, and we're just applying the 24 volts onto the side in order to allow the voltage to come across here. This one is a single pole contactor. It has one pole that's fixed. Here's a three pole contactor. And in some cases, like in the instance of these right here, we have 24 volt coils. In the instance of this one right here, we have 120 volt coil. And you have different FLA ratings, which are full load amps. And that has to do with the amount of current that's passing across the normally open contacts when they're closed. The higher the FLA rating, the stronger that the electrical magnet has to be. So in this case, when we apply 24 volts on the side of this, if this one has a high FLA rating, it needs to be able to suck that contact down even tighter uh, to be able to hold those contacts nice and tight for the high amperage running across it. We have our multimeter set on resistance and we're gonna go ahead and power our 24 volt transformer and then you'll see that these contacts are gonna close. So presently we're reading OL from our one probe to our other probe for the electrical contacts across here. Now we have 24 volts powering the coil, which is an electrical magnet sucking down the contacts, and we have our one probe here and our other probe here, and we're reading on our multimeter 0.0, .0 ohms of resistance. So that means that the contacts are closed, which means they're connected. And now we'll go ahead and disconnect our 24 volt power and we're reading OL, which means open line. So now we're not connected. So that's how the contactor works. So problem number one is when the contactor is stuck in the closed position. And this happens when the contacts are welded together just due to high amperage. So they melted and fuse together, and you see that we're reading 0.2 ohms across this contactor, so it is in the closed position, even when we don't have any 24 volts in the side. So you can see the contactor is actually stuck in that closed position. Problem number two is when you have a high resistance reading across the contacts, and that could be due to some of the pitting on the actual contacts themselves inside, and they're just not making a connection when we power the contactor. So right now you see we're reading OL, which means open line, and now we're gonna go ahead and power the contactor with 24 volts. You see that we're reading mega ohms right now. So it's 3.2 mega ohms. So that's as if those contacts are not touching. So that's an extremely high resistance reading, even though we are powering the contactor. So this contactor will have to be replaced. Here's a look at some burnt contacts. So you can see uh, when these are actually touching, this would, this would go in here like this. But when these touch, you have a high resistance reading. And that's just because you have a buildup on the actual contacts themselves. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend necessarily trying to file them while this is in place and trying to reuse the contactor. I would suggest that you just replace the contactor and they're not very expensive and then this way you know you're not gonna have that problem again. But the other thing is you wanna take an amp draw on the compressor to see if there's a problem and check the refrigerant charge uh, just to make sure that the unit is operating correctly. Problem number three could be ants or some other type of insect that's inside your contactor, like right in the contacts themselves. So when they close, they're either hanging up or just not making contact completely. You could also have cobwebs. I find a lot of cobwebs around here and even uh, other trapped insects in the cobwebs, um, well, spiders in there, and ants. So you're going to find a lot of ants, especially uh, down south in the United States, you're going to find a lot there. So that little bit of cobweb could stop the contacts from actually touching. And, and believe it or not, it's actually a common occurrence. Newer contactors are shielded, so you have no access to the contactor itself unless you take these two screws out. 
and the bottom coil is shielded as well. So you could use something like this in that situation, or you could use an electronic contactor in order to avoid the insects. Problem number four is when the coil burns out. This could happen due to water or high amperage. In this case, you see that we're reading the resistance value on the coil with our, with our probes here, and we're reading OL, which means open line. So you could have high amperage being drawn if these contacts were sucking only partially down. So if they were hanging up uh, due to an insect or just the inside, the, the plastic is wearing, and it's only pulling down part of the way, you're going to draw a lot more amperage on the quill, and the quill is a very small wire, and that's going to end up burning out. In this case, this one had a little puddle of water from the bottom up to the bottom of the quill, and that shorted this quill out. So in this case, you would need to replace these contactors. Problem number five could be a bad or loose electrical connection or improper voltage going to the contactor coil. So say you have a corroded electrical connection here, uh, then you're going to get a lower voltage than desired on that contactor coil. You could end up having the result of a burnout contactor coil such as this right here. You could also have uh, bad electrical connections outside of the contactor such as the line voltage connections like this one right here. You can see this one's pretty burnt out just due to, uh, this was a corroded connection right here, and that would be over here. So you could have several issues. It could be inside the contactor or outside the contactor, but the end result is it might damage the contactor itself, in which case you would end up needing to replace it. So those are the top five problems with contactors. If you're looking for any of the tools used in this video or the tools I use out in the field, I have them linked down in the description section below. If you want to help support this HVACR training channel, click here. If you want to subscribe, click here. And if you want to see another HVACR training video, click here. Hope you enjoyed yourself, and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.